<laughs> How's everyone doing? It's Dead Law Session 3 time. It's 7.02 p.m. on the West Coast. Uh, I don't know where the rest of y'all are at, whatever. Uh, but it's, <laughs> wow. it's time It's time to play some play some tabletop games. Y'all excited for this week? Yeah. Heck yeah. Yes. Absolutely. This is already session three. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right? There's So here's the thing, though, is that, like, the, the, the gut reaction is like, oh, this is already session three. That's crazy. But then the other gut reaction is like, this is only it's session only three. only session three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's getting started. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Let's uh, let's check in on our heroes of Southpaw. They have become plural. First, I think we're gonna check in on what's happening at the sheriff station. So let's get our sheriff station going. We've got, I believe, we left Lynn, Nicodemus, and Chance here. Uh, yep. Alongside uh, the recently awoken, he's okay. Sheriff Stilton, he's wait. I, I wouldn't say okay, but he ain't dead yet. And we also got Kit here. And it seems like uh, our three players here were about to take their leave, but as you pass by Chance, you notice Stilton gripping at the leg of your pants and. He says something softly, but it's too soft for you to hear. You might have to lean down. So Definitely you know. stopping to lean down. All right. He says, Meowdy Chance. <laughs> Meowdy <laughs> Sheriff. You, could could you make sure that Bucky stays out of trouble, would you? It ain't worth nobody getting hurt on my account. Yeehaw. I'll do my best, Sheriff. Thank you kindly, Chance. <sighs> okay, we best best make our way over to the church, boys. All right, out we go. <laughs> Heading out from the sheriff station, out onto the streets of Southpaw. Nicodemus, Lynn, and Chance run into Conrad, who appears to have walked at least a few paces away from the church at the end of Main Street. What kind of state is Conrad in right now? Uh, just not really um, processing everything that's happened so far. I mean, a lot's happened uh, in the last few hours. Um, I just stepped aside and let a man be shot by Beck. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of wild. And uh, I'm doing my best to try to get this weird little gremlin on my side. And uh, yeah, so things are a bit weird right now. Uh, are you over by the little gremlin man at this point? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we fed him some toes and he was satiated. So he seems to be uh, compliant, at least for now. He looks out of this world in bliss right now. And we actually have a little hand out of that. His belly oh, no. is so full of Oh. He's no. having a good old time. No. 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 Not the demon skunk art. <laughs> no. Insert art uh, courtesy of demon skunk. Thank you very much. <laughs> he has opposable toes. His hands are tied. That's, that's where you went. That's where you went with that. <laughs> I'm trying to gather information, all right? Okay. So, actually, give me a science check for Conrad. <laughs> now that, that that's actually relevant to something. Okay, okay. Chad is collectively saying no. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Damn. You know exactly <laughs> what's going on with this polydactyl motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> scientifically polydactyl. speaking... He doesn't have toes. He just has fingers on his feet. Oh, I guess yeah, that makes sense. He's, uh, he's so that's, obsessed with them. That's how we, that's how they survive in the universe. They evolved to not have toes. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get gobbled up. Uh, He'll get gobbled. Gobble, gobble, y'all. But 
Not as you uh, word. <laughs> uh, as the three of you uh, encounter Conrad and his very satiated goblin, you also see in the distance someone crouched over a body. You see the shadowed form of Taslin Beck, and it doesn't take you long to realize that he is standing over what used to be the deputy of Southpaw. So Beck, uh, you know, shot directly through uh, Bucky in what was a pretty devastating quick draw. Uh, and he he walks over to the body uh, and, and as is, is customary when you wound prey, uh, you put it out of its misery. So as he's crouched over uh, Bucky, he kind of opens his jaw wide and just tears into his neck, just pulling flesh up as he begins to devour the sheriff, or the deputy. And I think this is probably in full view of the rest of you. And Beck, something about this tastes so, so good to you. You are free at last from the influence of your shadow taking what should be yours. But oh. <clears throat> something's wrong. Something is very wrong. As you swallow that first mouthful of jackrabbit flesh, you feel your flesh starting to slew from your bones. Give me a vigor check. Uh. Alrighty. Ew. And we also have an image of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> if only I were so prepared. All right. Uh, you needed a four, so you succeed. The, the flesh doesn't quite pour off your bones just yet, but you feel this black bile bubbling up from your stomach and you can't keep it in. The shadow itself is starting to drain from you, pouring out your muzzle. You are going to lose five power points. Hmm. Now, give me an occult check to try and figure out why this is happening. Oh, I get it. Because you shot Bucky. All right. Uh, let's see, occult check. Uh, that is a four. All right. Uh, you think back as your body is racked with pain, the shadow continuing to pour from you. This must be the immediate discorporation that was mentioned mm -hmm. in the note on the banner in the center of town. You have supped upon the supplicants of Barbados, and now you are coming undone. The mm -hmm. order and continuity required to sustain a mortal form is giving way to the chaotic dislocation of the other side. You feel as if every piece of your body is rebelling against you rejecting the very notion of cohesion to go its own separate ways. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and and so he he Beck has a has an understanding of that in that moment. He he mm -hmm. gets what's happening. Yeah, but you don't know how to stop it. Okay. So are you going to try and figure that out on your own, or are you going to try and solicit help from I some think, of the others? I think Beck is going to immediately do something about this in Ooh. response. What's he going to do? Let's see if this roll is good. Uh, uh, maybe I'll Benny this one. You might need to Benny that. It's, it's a four to activate a, a power, yeah. and you're taking a minus one to everything from being wounded. Come on, give it to me. There okay, we go. Good. Yeah. All right, what are you activating? Yeah, so as a, because he immediately starts seeing himself, you know, shedding this shadow, this darkness that fills him, 
Uh, Beck pretty immediately begins to recognize that his tether to to Erebus, to this creature that is giving him strength, is fading. Mm -hmm. And so he immediately strengthens that tether by just casting darkness. And basically the way that this manifests is, you know, I think he's, he's going to eat He's go, he, he reaches down, he bites into the uh, Bucky's neck. He gets up and he immediately begins to vomit. And at first it's blood and then it's just black and it's pouring out of him. But I think in that moment of clarity where he's beginning to understand what's happening, he wills that darkness to just begin to spread. And suddenly just all of the illumination in this area begins to flicker in the area, it says right here, the size of a large blast. Basically, his whole immediate seeing range, it's like a smoke bomb goes off, just sudden darkness. And it begins to coalesce around him, kind of swirling around his body, giving him darker form than even the darkness that is around him. So everyone who's watching this probably just sees Beck as a darker black than the shadow that is now casting this area as he's hacking and coughing. And uh, does Erebus respond to this at all? You don't feel his immediate presence manifested as he was before. It's almost as if your connection is not necessarily severed, but diminished in a way where you don't feel his immediate influence around him. You do not feel the shadow walking with you. Mm, Okay. Uh, is that a result? Does Beck think that's a result of what just happened? Or is this... Okay, this is a result of this. Okay. Um, I think Beck, you know, as he begins to to kind of compose himself, just, you know, wipes the blood and the shadow off of his, his hand, this strange black, like, pharaoh fluid that's just sprickly, uh, prickly and, and spindly and moving, kind of trying to connect to itself. As he goes to like wipe his face off, he just splatters it on the ground with a flick of his wrist, and he just kind of begins to regain his composure. And he looks back, back towards Conrad, just goes, What are you looking at? Are you, are you okay? <laughs> well, that's a funny question. Give me a notice for Conrad. Conrad, he is not okay. He is continuing to deteriorate, deteriorate despite the web of darkness that he has produced to cloak himself in. Something is very wrong with him and it needs to be addressed, or he may not be around much longer. Oof. Um... <laughs> I was looking at, like, repair, like, as if I could use it to, to repair him. <laughs> uh, now, uh, the rest of you, the other three, are probably close enough to see this as well, if you'd like to offer any input. What okay. the even happened here? The hell? MacGyver skill works on supernatural surgery, right? <laughs> can I roll a cult to see if my character can figure out what happened? Sure. That would be appreciated because I'm at a loss at the moment. Ooh, three's not going to cut it, unfortunately. Can uh, I spend a Benny on Benny. it, though? I'll do a Benny. Has, like, anyone actually read the notice that was on the banner, and should we be aware of it? Like, I think Beck was the only Beck one explicitly who read, it. read it, yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure if that was actually explained to us or not. Let's see. Nick Demas, with that foreign occult, you recognize visually, at least, what is happening to Beck. It is the same thing that happened to the former sheriff before Stilton inherited the position. The poor man melted as he marched into the center of town, grasping at the banner that lay there. I 
think I read the banner too. Um, um, and I, I think I remember, um, or at least talking to someone who had read the banner. Um, mm-hmm. um, so I kind of figured that, uh, do I see what's in his mouth? Uh, I don't know how identifiable it is, but you can probably see it. Yeah. I could probably make the connection to thing that I, I can probably see the dead body too. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Who the so fuck did the former sheriff eat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, n- now I'm actually putting that together that he must have eaten someone too, and I don't know if I know that or not. Ra- or rather, I don't know who I could put that on. Um, that is a reasonable assumption to make at this point. Yeah. Um, so I think about the healing that I did a few moments ago on Sheriff Stilton, and I think, hmm, we need a dream walk. We need to learn how to do that. We still don't know how. And if we don't know how to do that, then we're stuck here forever. So we need this guy, right? Can you even help him? Let's see. I think right now, Beck is just like, you know, as this darkness is sort of swirling around him and kind of peeling off of his body, you know, we're we're seeing parts of him discorporate, but then reform in the shadow as he's cloaked in this darkness. And Beck is no stranger to the dream. He understands the logic of this place, even if he doesn't have the words for it. But this is the first time I think he's ever seen anything quite like this. He's seen things ripped apart in the Sea of Dreams, but never himself. And so right now he's just sort of standing there, you know, spitting bile out of his mouth when he can, kind of trying to wipe his face off and get the blood off of himself. Uh, Despite what probably should be painful to most people, he is more intrigued by what is happening than necessarily physically harmed by it in the sense of pain uh, as he's just kind of watching, you know, his fingers become more transparent and wisp away only to reform seconds later like they're they're part of this shadowy steam uh, that's roiling off of him. Throws up blood. Ah, I see. (laughs) (laughs) Intriguing. I'm going to walk up to Beck and I say, mind if I give you a look-see? Is there any assistance that can be provided here? Uh, sure. What do you want to roll to help out with? Hold him still. <laughs> you can hold him still, or uh, you're trained in healing. You could help with that. Not that. What you... Not that <laughs> trained. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you can do about this, Topsider? Well... I see you're wallowing in the dark and what is dark, but just another bit of God's creation without any light. (laughs) Ain't that right? I think he just kind of lets you, you know, his presence is not hostile to you in this moment. He's got bigger worries. (laughs) (laughs) So if I want to use my paladin healing mm-hmm. would that be it'll be a faith a roll okay Ooh. oh thank fucking god <laughs> <laughs> all right that is a raise uh actually yeah you needed a raise to fix what is wrong with him so damn good job Let's see, and that takes you down to nine power points left. So as you lay your hands upon Beck, what are you thinking? What is your methodology in trying to treat this affliction, this malady that has befallen him? Think about the dark. I think about clay. I think about sand and the things that hold us together. And I think about how every single thing is a piece of a big part. 
coming together as opposed to unraveling. I lay my hands on his shoulders. I see. As you lay your hands upon him, you can feel your touch spreading a strange warmth through his body, one that feels very foreign to Beck as the shadow that he is composed of starts to knit and stitch back together, similar to when you touched Conrad recently and saw his wounds stitch themselves shut. And as you ponder on the connections between all things, you feel a connection that exists between him and that banner in the center of town. But this is not a two way connection. It is draining him as if the shadow itself is being pulled from him into that banner. You have treated his wounds and you have saved him in the short term, but that banner is going to continue draining whatever passes for life in his shell away as long as it remains. Does that mean Did, even if he gets away from it, it'll keep doing that? Or do I know that? Getting away from it might help or destroying it might help. You're not quite sure. Could I roll a cult on what might be able to destroy it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. That works. Let me smash it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me smash. I like that's a bad idea. You're not yeah. sure. All right, Benny. Spend them early. Set Spend us up for success. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh... You think either way would work, either getting Beck far away out of town or destroying the banner itself. And from what you saw, it looks like it's just a normal banner. It's made of cloth and wood with little bits of brass uh, to tack the uh, memorandum into it. I'm going to walk up to Lynn. I'm going to put my paw on his shoulder. I'm going to lean in real close to his ear and I'm going to say, smash it. Don't need to tell me twice. Question. Uh-huh. With Beck being healed like this, does he feel his connection to Erebus uh, strengthen again, or is it still like he's distancing himself? You feel the link between the two of you grow stronger back to where it normally is. Okay. But he is not actively... He's not here right now. Yeah, yeah, he's not using that link. You're not okay. sure if uh, that left a bad taste in his mouth or what. Mm -hmm. He's a cranky kitty. Absolutely. I am going to I am going to say, though, if this is the domain of hunger and we smash that banner, then we're suddenly at risk of being supper. <laughs> this ain't the domain of hunger. Let me tell you that right now. It's close on the border, but no. This is an annexation. This place shouldn't be here. It's somewhere else. I got, right. a question. I got a question for Beck. Shoot, then. This banner goes down. Does that pop the bubble? <laughs> You're asking the right questions. And I think Beck begins to walk and he says... We're going to need to leave this place real soon. I'll be honest with you, none of the people here, I don't think any of them are going to make it. The ones that do, they'll need to be inside, underground if possible. We're going to need a few things before we do anything. The second you take that banner down, the protection around this place might go. So we need to be ready. I'm going to need to teach y'all how to walk the dream. You know, you have no idea what you're in for. But I can help. So I think he's waiting. The hell he out just out of it here. Yeah. And Nicodemus, as they mention underground, a place does come to mind that's pretty safe underground. <laughs> yeah, there's the meat wagon. 
beneath mm. the bar. What? Huh? Found Not out good the other any. day. It's another restaurant? <laughs> no, it's Mortadella's Whorehouse. Oh. While we're here, while there's nothing going on, Beck is now for the first time actually reloading his gun because I think he was down to one bullet left. <laughs> That's all you need, isn't it? Yeah, but he's not sure what he's walking into. So he is actually I'm calling it out right now in game that he is actively loading his gun. This is a thing that he does when he has time. It's uh, his nervous habit. He's stimming by loading his gun. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Beck Beck looks at the group and says, I don't know what kind of connection you have to these people here, but I got no business with them. They want to start a fight. I'll fight, but. I gotta get moving. And we're gonna need a few things. Conrad. Hundred. Yes. You said you collect fungus. Yes. <laughs> you got any particularly spicy fungus on you? Um. Question for Ka. Yeah. Since I didn't like prepare anything like that, can I roll for that? Is that something give me, that? Give me a science roll. Hell yeah. Show me how big your collection is, nerd. <laughs> oh, I don't. I don't know if that's gonna be good enough. Mm hmm. Well, let's see. Let's uh, let's Benny that. A four though. A four is pretty good. A four is pretty good. Damn, a seven's pretty good, but though. A seven is much better. Uh, <laughs> while not on your person, you do have access to some spicy mushrooms. Uh, back at the base, at the uh, station. Yeah, I had like a little corner uh, set up for it. Like a, a bin, a bin of sorts. Um, Stashed away on government property. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I've got I've got a pretty diverse diverse collection actually. Uh, is there something you're looking for? The kind the natives use. You know what I'm saying? We're yes. gonna need to go somewhere. Can I trust you to go get those while I handle the bar? Yeah, absolutely. Well, why don't you making me wait for little man? And then he begins to walk towards the bar. <laughs> so at this point, I'm going to kind of head in the direction to try to go get that stuff. But I'm going to just kind of like pitch to the everyone else like. So deepest underground is safe, right? So we got to tell everyone to get down there. So. What about toe beans here? Oh, <laughs> toes. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's 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 coming with me. He's very compliant now. Yeah, I still I've got I've got I've got like the leash and everything, but I'm not even like I'm not like yanking on it. He's just kind of like following me where I walk. How many toes did he eat? Uh, did you give him two feet worth or one feet worth? Was it one feet worth that was up on the cross? I don't remember what the what we no. had available there. It both of Damascus's feet were pinned. They were crucified. They were nailed to the wall and Beck took them both off. Yeah. Gross. If you if you gave him both, uh, he is definitely sitting pretty. <laughs> He's got a full um, course meal, baby. All ten oh, toesies. Sitting ugly. He's all right. I beck and call. And we've established a becking order. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna whisper to uh, Chance. Uh, can you help me get Stilton? Uh, how are we gonna tell him about the deputy? We're not gonna. I'm not even sure what I just watched happen. Don't let him see. Yeah, yeah, I'll help. Let's go get him. All right. So those two are heading to get Stilton. Uh, Conrad is heading out into the wilderness alone. Love to see it. Uh, what's yeah, I was... Steam is doing. Uh, I, I, I haven't quite I haven't quite wandered off yet. I'm stalled. Okay. And, uh, I'll, you know, that'll make sense in a second. Gotcha. I want to follow Beck to the bar. I think Beck is uh, just going to take this opportunity, you know, while you two are here, just to say, 
And just to kind of clue you in on how this works, uh, because he's thinking more so than anything else right now, like, we need to leave. Like, Beck has caused enough trouble in his life and his unlife to know to get when the getting is good and get out when the getting is bad. So uh, even outside of, uh, you know, the current circumstances of this being a very supernatural situation, uh, Beck has been here longer than he normally is when he comes to a town to kill a bunch of people. So, uh, (laughs) you know, after preparing and making sure that everyone, uh, you know, is kind of everyone who's going to leave is going to leave. I think Beck is just kind of walking into the bar. Uh, Is it who's who's with me? Is it Nicodemus and, and Lynn right now? Uh, I went with chance to get stuff. Oh, okay. Done. It's oh, just okay. Lynn then. So I, I think Beck is gonna just square off with, with Lynn and just kinda say like Listen, the dream is not a nice place. It shifts and changes as you walk it. You keep your eyes on the path, keep your head down. You don't want to be caught when the focus shifts. Now, the best way to do this for people like you, you need to get faded somehow, get different, think different. I can't let you get pissed drunk. You need to still be able to dream. But if we can alter your perception, maybe you can survive the walk. Not entirely unfamiliar with the process. Oh, well, good then. You're a natural Sherpa. Wonderful. And then Beck <laughs> just kind of wheels around and goes to the bar. Uh, who's at the bar? Who's in this? Who's in the pub right now? Is it just Mortadella up here or or what? Uh, it oh. is just Mortadella at the moment, yeah. Did we lose? Uh, Marty's restarting to fix some audio. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, as he gets up to Mortadella, he just goes... <sighs> We're going to need some liquor for the road. What kind of liquor? What's the strongest stuff you got? Chip at Hell, I'll take the worm this time if you got it. She was going to reach for the absinthe, but when you offered to take the worm, she immediately switched gears over to the tequila. (laughs) Hey man, absinthe used to have worms in it too, so. (laughs) But now they're absent. (laughs) So, Beck is not really telling her. He's not. He's not telling her that he's leaving, but I think he is. I think Beck is going to very sternfully just kind of look at her and say things are gonna get real messy around here you got a place you can hunker up (sighs) yeah but what about everybody else is it a place everybody else could hunker up is it a place where you want everybody else to hunker up she narrows her eyes at you, but then relents and kind of waves her head back and forth. Yeah, Listen, I Missy. can make that work. Listen, Missy, the way I see it, you got a lot of power here. You might not think you do, but you do. It's your choice who you let in. I'm not here to drag anyone out. Now, whatever you do is your business. This town's going to fall fall worse than it's fallen already. The way I see it, it's your job to decide who gets to live and who gets to stay out here with the rest. Ponder that. And I think Beck pours her a shot of the tequila that she just handed him, and he pours himself a glass, raises it, and then takes the shot. She takes the bottle. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, is she going to replace the bottle with the absinthe now that she just downed the rest of the fucking tequila that yes. we need for this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good for her. Good for her. Uh, as as she does this, Beck also, uh, he, ask, he asks a peculiar question uh, and, and one that I think seems uncharacteristic 
to her, uh, or uncharacteristic to the to the situation in, in the frontier. Uh, but he he ponders for a moment and then says, "Can you do me a favor?" What's that? Now I don't ask favors lightly, but you got any natives here? Yeah, let me check my back pocket. Oh, please. Oh, no, I wanted you prefer to... the Indians in the cupboard? Oh, if I wanted to do something bad here, I would have done it already. I already have. This is strictly business. Why do you ask? I think Beck seems frustrated by this. And he looks at her and he says, You don't know what it's like, people like you, Americans. You've taken everything, every single thing that you own, that you have, comes from someone else. You know that? It goes long back, back before the founding of this country. You are a lineage of thieves. Now I got business if you got natives here, my people. I'm Your only going to ask you one more time. She takes a deep breath and then she sighs and says, wait here. Thank you, miss. All right, and I think that's about the time uh, Chance and Nicodemus will manage to wheel the, the sheriff on in here. Let me get him out. Help, the psychopath with the gun is talking politics. Just smile and nod. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Stilton and Kit arrive with uh, Chance and Nicodemus, and Stilton tries to give everyone a, a nice howdy, a nice how do you do, but his voice isn't treating too well still. Does Beck notice Stilton is here? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. sure do. Uh, I think... Wait a minute. So Nicodemus, <laughs> Nicodemus, <laughs> Nicodemus would have made sure that he didn't see. Oh, okay. So, so mm. should I make a roll for that, or should I? Sure. Because uh, I, I said that before. Give, give wait, me this a stealth like, roll. This is like on the other Stilton side of town. Check. Is Beck over there? Oh, I thought you said he was coming to the bar. Yeah, I thought that's what you guys said. Yeah, You're... no, uh, so I, I told Chance that we were not going to let Beck see him. Okay, so let's yeah. uh, let's give you a stealth roll to not let Beck see him. <laughs> <laughs> uh... All right, oh, that'll no, be opposed no, by a notice from uh, Beck. Well, good. the good news about this is that Beck's notice is pretty rough right now. Um, uh, I was going to also say if there's anything that could be done to, like, help assist that <laughs> you could try and distract him that's kind of you the know what play uh, oh no uh, ooh. <laughs> all right <let's> get... <laughs> y'all are so afraid of me you guys, y'all are so afraid i of wonder me. why it's so much fun i love having this kind of power it's great <laughs> <laughs> let's get that uh notice from beck Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. So, Lynn, how do you want to distract Beck once you notice oh. that, uh oh, this is not going to go well? Uh, so, my plan here is to, like, I'm, I'm assuming that, like, I'm at the bar with Beck, and mm. while this is going on, if they're trying to drag Stilton's ass, like, through the back, as it were, mm -hmm. um, then it's going to, like, slam my fist on the table to get Beck's attention. Ooh, do it. Uh, Can give me an intimidate for that. That's, that's kind cool. of what I was thinking. Yeah. We'll see how it goes from there. All right. That's pretty is good. This, is this opposed or no? 
Uh, yeah, that'd be opposed by spirit. Spirit. Okay. Uh, sure. Let's give that a try. All right. So you <laughs> nope. managed to distract him just enough that they can sneak Stilton through the back and not uh, <laughs> a- awaken Beck to the realization that his prey is still up and about. Bless Stilton's heart. He tried to do a smarts check. <laughs> he How sure you- did. He got a two. <laughs> How do you guys know Beck wasn't going to invite Stilton up for a drink and let bygones be bygones? Come on. There's a lot of blood on him. (laughs) Disguise him with all the blood. I think like once Len gets Beck's attention, he's just like, now look, I know you don't got much stake in this town, but there are good people here. No, you might not know what that's like, but we prefer to keep him that way. Alive. (laughs) There's good people everywhere. Let me tell you one thing. First rule of the frontier is good people die. It's kind of like looking over his shoulder. Yeah, that's so. <laughs> motioning them <laughs> with his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. good news is bad people die all the same. Cheers to that. Slancha. And then he drinks more of the absinthe. And while those two are having themselves a nice drink upstairs, let's check out what's going on downstairs. Where people yeah, go to get to what do did some we w- just meat wander wagon. into? <laughs> uh, downstairs. Uh, I believe Argo is still here with Mr. Wolfram, and Mortadella ends up coming down the cellar. And she says. You two better make yourselves decent. You're going to have company in a minute here. (laughs) K.O. Argo's just out. Oh. Oh, dear. (laughs) Can you get him? Oh. We don't have nearly (laughs) enough water for that. All right. uh, Just throw a sheet on him. That worked upstairs. (laughs) <laughs> worked upstairs. They're <laughs> 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 hiding a body like it's four rooms. <laughs> All um, right, so uh, Wolfram gets Argo at least a little bit uh, out of line of sight, uh, just in time for <laughs> the rest of everyone in town to come down here. Uh, what do we got? We got Stilton, we got Kit, uh, we got Mark. <laughs> We had a chance of Nicodemus coming down. I don't think Kit should be down here, man. Argo's just like shut up behind a couch somewhere. The <laughs> Wild West will age a boy. It sure will. Wow. I mean, it's currently just a room. <laughs> it sure is. It's just a very suggestive room. All right, so Wolfram drops Argo off uh, in the back room, comes back out and says, oh, we're entertaining quite a lot of guests tonight, aren't we? Uh, how's, how, how do we charge for this? And then Mortadelle's like, no, no, this, we're, this is going to become a shelter for the storm or whatever's going on out there. I wish I could rightly tell you what's going on out there, but yeah. Beck says it's safest down here. It's best you guys hold up down here. And where exactly are you marching off to? Uh, Mortadella asks. I really wish I knew the answer to that. But uh, anywhere other than sitting around and waiting for nothing to happen. I suppose that's the prudent thing to do. And then she looks up to Nicodemus and she asks, you're going with them, aren't you? I'm going to wipe my brow from sweat from carrying uh, the possum around. He is quite heavy, despite his short stature. I'll just kind of whistle. I'm going to go and I'm going to get us some resources I'm going to make sure that my bees are all right. I'm going to make sure my horses are right. I'm going to bring stuff back, all right? 
Y'all do not leave the shelter no matter what. Think of it as poison above. All right. And Mortadella turns to Wolfram. She says, man at the bar wants to speak to you. Oh, okay. And Wolfram is going to head upstairs. Um, Nicodemus and Chance, are you going to stay down here for now, or are you going to head back upstairs with Wolfram? I'll head up with Wolfram. All right. Um, is there anything that I can be doing to help you get set up down here? It doesn't look like you intended this to be for long stays. Well, sweetheart, if you could get some small pillows and blankets from some of the other houses people ain't using no more, that would probably help us out a lot. Happy to do it, ma'am. Thank you kindly. Guess I'm going exploring. Oh, boy. It's looting. <laughs> Is it looting if they're dead? Yes. <laughs> Maybe you'll find Soft Bottom hiding out in one of those houses because he just disappeared the second I cast red. <laughs> oh, absolutely. The correct response. All right. So Chance and Nicodemus head back upstairs. I think Chance is probably going to exit out the back immediately. And uh, uh, Wolfram is going to head on out to the bar, uh, tugging up his slutty shirt and... Uh, <laughs> chronically unable to fasten it for some reason. Uh, and he looks to Beck with a look of understanding and mm. nods his head. Yeah, uh, you speak the old words? Uh, some of them from a diaspora of different tongues. Mm. And he does repeat the greeting you offer him in that same language, which I myself will not attempt to butcher. <laughs> I think Beck uh, kind of looks him over and goes, Do you have any idea what's happening here? I see why you called me up. I have had some suspicions based on tales I have heard in my time walking amongst the many peoples. But nothing in particular seems exactly like what is happening here. Sure, every story's got a kernel of truth. He but nods you can't his put it too far past you, that's for sure. But these tales they tell, they are passed by Maw, and they become broken over time. Memories become foggy as they are passed from generation to generation. However, there is always some kernel of truth, like you said. Some mm. memory that makes these occurrences feel familiar. I'll ask you plainly, brother. Do you know how to walk the dream, even if you haven't done it before? Do you know? I have heard that to walk amongst dreams, one must enter a state where they are both body and spirit at once. I may have something stashed away that can help with that. Good. Keep it for yourself. Things are gonna go bad here, brother. You best get topside when the barrier falls. And I think at this, Beck pulls his gun out and rests it on the counter once again, like he did with Mortadella at the start, pointing it at Wolfram. Mm -hmm. And he goes, we are exiles, people without a people without places. I owed it to you at least to tell you that something bad is coming. And out there ain't much better, but 
you can survive. I know that for sure. I'll do my best, but I wouldn't do anyone proud by abandoning the others here. What do you owe them? He looks into your eyes and thinks for a moment, and he says, more than you will ever know. And then he gives you a slight respectful bow of his head and heads back downstairs. Beck just like huffs and looks frustrated. Is extremely frustrated about this. Um, in perhaps the way that is the most uh, sincere and relatable way that he has expressed thus far, um, Beck is a very dangerous man with no restraint, and everything he just showed was restraint. Everything he just did required a, an amount of restraint that drained him physically. Um, Beck takes one point of fatigue. Yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, I think he holsters his gun and he just under his breath just says fucking coward. Ooh. That go the way you thought it was going to go? Listen, you want to start a fight with me right now? <laughs> Maybe later. Good answer. All right. And then with that settled, I think we're going to cut to Conrad. Conrad, mm -hmm. my buddy, give me yeah. a notice check. Oh, yeah. I actually, I actually rolled it. Oh, uh, you did? Quite a well, while ago. Um, I missed it. What did, what did it come out to? Uh, came out to six. Roll result six. All right. Uh, you notice as you are passing by the churchyard. Let me get that back out. Uh, that darkness that uh, Beck had cast over the place has thankfully started to fade. But you do notice the spot where he had his duel with Buckshot. The body isn't there anymore. It almost looks like it's been dragged away, out away from town. There are bloody smears along the ground there. <laughs> Damn it. Someone else got to him first. No toes. Uh, well, we'll see if we can figure out what that was about, but I think we've got some mushrooms to collect first. So on that, I will uh, yeah, head on over to go collect the mushrooms. All right. With your your pet goblin in tow. In tow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Heading out of town. You breach the veil into the other side proper, and you can feel the unease in the air creeping across your skin. You head back out to that heliograph tower that you once manned, finding the entire metal structure choked with the unnatural vines that have begun to grow around it. Eric, no. <laughs> okay um so i guess i will roll a notice to see if it looks like there's any safe way up or if the the way it's kind of uh surrounded there blocks the entrance you think you're gonna have to climb up these writhing tendrils to get in there they've sort of closed off the easy access points Okay. Um. So, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to talk to the goblin. Uh, hey. Uh, you like toes a lot, right? Toes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we like these things a lot called mushrooms. Uh, I have it in a bin up there. Uh, if you can get that for us, I will get you as many toes as I possibly can. Do you think so, you can climb up there and get the mushrooms? So he scrunches up his face for a minute when you describe these mushrooms. They sound distinctly non-toe-like. But when you offer him toes in return, he sort of does that. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. 
and uh yeah I, I've, I've got i've got a bunch <laughs> of different kinds in there um but on the bottom shelf get the ones on the bottom shelf i don't know if you can read there no there, of course you can't uh yeah don't go for the for the black ones on top uh don't go for the white ones in the middle but just just all the ones on the bottom just uh, grab a bunch of those if you can <laughs> oh my goodness he is severely motivated by the, the <laughs> promise of toes. <laughs> oh. It's like a little crackhead climbing up the tower. Yeah, a little crackhead goblin climbing up the tower. Toes, 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 toes. Uh, and he gets up there, and then you just start seeing a rain of all of your belongings and your co workers' belongings <laughs> being f- haphazardly <laughs> thrown out the side of the tower. <laughs> Hey, yeah, you, you're good up there. Yeah, keep keep looking for them. You just hear a really distant, tinny echo of toast, 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 toast. Yep, yep, they're the so- soft and squishy things on the bottom. You see them? Uh, an entire shelf drawer is tossed out, and you can see the thing you are looking for tumbling through the air, spilling out before you. Yeah. <laughs> you no want to give me an athletics to see if you can catch it without uh, some of it going to waste? Sure, sure. He just revealed that his name is Griebler. The Griebler. <laughs> his name's Tobin. Well, according to Chad, his name is Tarantino's. No, oh, Tarantino's. Tarantino's. That's even better. <laughs> All right, that is an amazing, amazing athletics role. You, uh, you do the the Sam Raimi Spider Man catching all the lunch on the tray. <laughs> 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 I'm not bad at sports. If anything else was being thrown my way, I don't know how successful I'd be, but I I care about those mushrooms deeply. <laughs> <laughs> well, your, your your respect for fungus has saved us all on this day, and you managed to walk away with more than what you need uh, to enter this liminal state that Beck has described. Yes, I get, and I, I sort of picked up on what he's talking about. I, I had some black trumpets, I had some oysters, but I'm setting those all aside, and I'm grabbing all the, all the uh, psilocybin mushrooms I can. Neither right. of those were mushrooms. Mm. <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you keep your instruments in here? <laughs> um, um, actually, they were mushrooms. I got my he trumpets said and my oysters. <laughs> um, actually. All right. So you're going to head right back to town after you uh, get that settled? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, he, he, does he uh, make it down safely? Does he have to roll or anything for that? Or is he, is he good? Uh, let's give him a, a, a roll. Yeah, let's, let's see if he can do a flip. Let's see here. Do a kick flip. Oh, oh my god. Of, oh, yeah. Just oh, why? Right. Oh, yeah. the yeah. sickest rail. Dude, he's not. Greeble's not afraid of heights, like even remotely. He's just yeah. Greeble's rolls are cracked. <laughs> okay, the the crack goblin uh, does a fucking flip out of the tower after completely dismantling <laughs> everything that wasn't nailed down in there. Lands with a three point superhero landing, then looks up and says, "Toes." <laughs> That's what happens when you have hands for feet. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Y'all are giving Go- Gollum the Ring of Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're giving him toes. Kind of power. <laughs> powering. <laughs> All right. All thank right. you so much for that. Uh, let's head back to town. And uh, yeah. All right. And then do you want to meet them at Mortadella's? Part of, it crossed my mind to try to look where that body was dragged, but I know better than to try to venture off by myself for it. So, uh, I'll oh, nice. talk it over with the guys to see what's up. All right. Let's head on back then. <laughs> All right. So Conrad uh, manages to arrive with his little goblin friend, uh, having secured what is needed uh, while uh, Beck and Lynn are at the bar here. So I'll just kind of talk to Beck quietly, knowing I don't want uh, I'm assuming Stilton was brought back here and I I don't want anyone hearing this conversation, but (laughs) let's talk to Beck and I say, Hey, so, um, the guy you shot, his corpse was dragged off somewhere. Um, 
Is that information useful in any way? Should we be concerned about what took him away? I mean, I killed him once. Can't be too hard to kill him again. He almost got you back at the end there. Please. I just want to be <laughs> sure that when we break the seal or whatever the heck is going on, if that's something we're needed to be on the lookout for as well. Quite the opposite, my friend. Now, the way the dream works is not like this. No, in fact, the more hypervigilant you are out there, the more dangerous it is for you. Your very being will be torn to pieces by the shifting focus of the dream sea. Clear your mind. Whatever comes will come. Not much to do but walk. I just give him a nod at that, and, uh, you know, I feel like I'm picking up what he's putting down. I think... Beck is is right now. He really is just preparing. I think he he turns to to Lynn in sort of a in that moment of like kind of going back over the things he said. And he goes, "You say there are good people here, good people that don't deserve to die. Well, you're sitting at the bar with me. You got anyone you want to bring with us? It's your gamble." Greebull ominously appears. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would point right at Gre- I would point right at Greebull. Yeah, this this little guy he's coming with. <laughs> Just one I can think of that might be of use. Time's ticking, big man. I think Len just gets up and I don't think he's been to the meat wagon, so he's like trying to just wander around, find where the actual entrance is for it. <laughs> yeah, give me a notice check for Lynn. Someone might have to show you the way. Kind of want him to fail this. <laughs> ah, no, you got that exploding die. You, you succeed on that. You uh, you managed to find back there. They've left the trap door open now, so it's quite obvious in the back oh. room. I don't think he like actually goes down there. He just kind of pokes his head in. Uh, any of y'all seen Argo? Uh, you hear Mortadella shout back, He's indisposed, hon! Is he dead? <laughs> He's about halfway there. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna come get him. Um, give, give him ten minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the little death. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty small. <laughs> Beck just chuckles to himself as he keeps drinking. All right, so you heading down there? Yeah. All right, let's see. Why did I name this the cum bunker in my notes? <laughs> the, no. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. Incredible. No. How long has this been here? <laughs> we don't ask questions around here, Mortadella informs you as you uh, arrive <laughs> downstairs. And uh, as you arrive, I think uh, this is about the time Chance returns, having found a uh, cowering Bertram Softbottom hiding out in one of the houses nearby. And he ends up uh, heading down the stairs after you. He's like, what on earth is this place? Everybody's me. And uh, as everyone is uh, crowding around, uh, Argo, you wake up in the back room of the uh, the meat wagon. You don't know where your clothes are. <laughs> Normal. Normal everyday mood. Is anything happening? <laughs> You said I'm in uh, the you, back room. You are in the back room and you realize that there's a crowd out in the main area. Uh, more than the population is usually the size of down here. Uh, this butt 
run on notice. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, God. No, oh, it's goodness. the worst room to roll a notice in. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> You've spent a lot of time studying this room, it appears. What are you trying to notice? Just, just what level of awareness I have of what's happening around me. Cause... You wake up in a cold sweat, immediately aware that everyone has entered the the bunker beneath the meat wagon, and you they are between you and your clothes. The nightmares are real. <laughs> <laughs> just the do, we see Argos, or do we see Argo's clothes? Uh, he hasn't emerged yet. Uh, you do see his clothes uh, that are folded <laughs> up neatly uh, by a hand not his own. Aww. Wolfram's the best character. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the Wolfram fan art? Where's the Weasel Babies go to? <laughs> Just trapped in a small room with one exit and no clothes. Uh, Mortadella clears her throat and motions her head back towards the back room. Is it like just a rape situation that's going on? Uh, that's the only thing between you and that back room, yes, is just the curtain. Just kind of like throw his clothes in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you do that, <laughs> good. That's it. <laughs> that's, oh, okay. that's, that's, that's the exclamation. <laughs> that, that's the thought terminator. Uh, so as, as you uh, go deliver those clothes, Bertram starts to put the pieces together and he uh, he gasps and he says, this is it. This is what I've been looking for. And he starts scribbling two words over and over again on his scratch pad. Gay cowboys, gay cowboys, gay cowboys, gay cowboys. <laughs> I'm going to be rich. Okay, we can save, we can save some of Southpaw. <laughs> <laughs> there could be exceptions. I, Argo is confusingly getting dressed while hearing several voices he's not supposed to be hearing. <laughs> Like We're gonna be heading out soon. Make yourself up. decent. Why the hell would you be doing that? What do you think? He shot really someone else, devices. didn't he? He's walked away at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you walk away, you see Kit examining the pole in the middle. What do you, what do you think the pole's for? Uh, you know, if it's load bearing? <laughs> it's probably structural. <laughs> Mortadella says, don't, don't touch that. <laughs> no. I'm getting this joke in every single session. Yeah. <laughs> Running things into the ground is what we do here in the meat wagon. As evidenced by Argo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think when Argo comes out, he uh, screams at Stilton. And then <laughs> <laughs> ah! and he he gets his paralyzation instinct kicks in and yeah. he fall, flops over on the couch. <laughs> ah, ah, oh, you're alive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not going to help. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean that's not going to help? Mortadella says. <laughs> Ain't you glad the sheriff's alive? Uh, Mort what is everybody doing down here? They all find out I'm you don't charge rent? <laughs> Please, I would have charged you rent if I knew you could pay. Money is how the system exerts control, Mortadella. Yeah, I've heard this lecture before, but no, we were told to take shelter down here. Shelter from what? from the clouds that are turning people into goop or whatever. And who said this? I don't know, do everybody. You, she gestures vaguely. <laughs> everybody. It was that coyote, wasn't it? Something Seems walks in and just sounds confident. Y'all just listen. Of course. He just said, he's in the moment of realization hits. Like, <laughs> of course they do. 
They're the only ones that left. There's the people that are gullible. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Argo has self-selected the survivors in a way <laughs> to be gullible people. <laughs> God damn it. You sure have. <laughs> what the hell are you writing? This is a private residence. Mm -hmm. Private residence. That's a fantastic title. It'll be about a military man down on his luck, and he's turned to turning tricks to make Brent. What that? What do I do to snatch it from him? What a roll! What a roll! And <laughs> uh, do you have thievery? Uh, uh, no. No. Uh, just give me agility. Agility. This is. This is it. Do it. Oh, successful. I just snatches the paper, he sees the page that says gay cowboys. Well, he doesn't see it. He doesn't know what it says. But he sees what he's he heard what he was saying and he and he can't read the page. So he just tears it off and swallows the page. <gasps> just throws no! the notepad away. <laughs> I need that. Very valuable research material. <laughs> Government secrets. <laughs> <laughs> just, also, uh, your government now. Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> so I, yes. Oh in my fact, God. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with the is government. True. The hero and, Southpaw is a Texas Ranger. I'm with the government, and everything in this room is extremely redacted. <laughs> Especially for the kid. <laughs> I have yet to met a government man who can tell me what to do, says Kit. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have time for this, Kit. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> it's the useless, most useless fucking role I could have possibly done. <laughs> Why am I exploding all my roles? None of these are helpful. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I'm going mean, to say you get a betty for that. That was great. Jesus Christ. Ugh. All right, after witnessing that, Lynn, uh, do you want to leave him to stew in this mire of uh, or do you want to rescue uh, I, him and take him upstairs? I think he clears his throat and says, <laughs> we don't have a lot of time, so we got we got stuff to do. You need to come with us. And who Jesus exactly is we in. this time? Argo, are you done screwing around? We need the hero of Southpaw to help us save the town. You can't do that from down here. Excuse me, I don't listen to people that owe me money I don't believe in. <laughs> I don't rightly know what you mean by that, but uh, you ain't earning anything down here. <laughs> Just assume that Chance has conned him multiple times by now. <laughs> I assume that Chance has stolen from him in the last few minutes somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you owe me, so move your ass. God damn it. Just give me a minute. Yeah. So things are fucked. Mm hmm. <laughs> so. <laughs> Argo is going to make an attempt to spin a narrative with these people. Ooh. I actually don't know what to <laughs> what the exact role is for that but for the uh, uh that sounds like it would be either performance or persuasion. Cuz he's currently very worried about the fact that the uh everything's completely fucked <laughs> at the mm -hmm. moment and Beck made things worse. And he doesn't know what's going on there, but he has a habit of telling tales to these groups. And now seems the best chance he's going to get. So he gets up on that stage, on the pole, obviously. <laughs> and he's going to tell... <laughs> what the hell are you just... doing? <laughs> Freaking, like, like n chop at the neck, just, just silence gesture. <laughs> Didn't actually prepare speech of the problem. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, fuck. <laughs> the best speeches are off the cuff. Fuck. <laughs> Speak from the heart. Speech, no. speech, speech, speech. Listen, I, I know some of you don't exactly want to hear from me right now. But I need you to know that we're going to get through this. And that but we've got an expert, we've got new wisdom about how this world works, and with and information is a weapon. It strengthens us. We're going to go out there, we're going to get to the bottom of this, and we're going to bring Southpaw back home. And while we're gone, I... Well, Deputy Bucky will have things handled. <laughs> Kind of make a make up. a motion of Nix Nix the deputy part. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I... Well, Stone's still alive. Still, Stone's got yeah. things handled. He's made, he's made this far. <laughs> so you can depend on us, the heroes of Southpaw. What do I roll? <laughs> It's kind of like look over to chance. It's well, depending on the role. We'll just imagine this was a much better, more impressive. Why, speech. why? Why roll anything for such a riveting and heartfelt speech? Fuck you! Improv's hard. You aren't here. <laughs> <laughs> just turn the crickets on. It's <laughs> oh, he's dying up there. <laughs> no, not if I roll really well. Yeah. <laughs> Then it's you it. just I uh, someone who's better at improv did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, what, is the, what is the like fear mechanic role? Uh, either performance or persuasion to uh, performance. go against the fear. Yep, and you're good at both. Yeah, I am. Uh, let's see, it's persuasion. Come on, that's not oh. amazing. But I get a free reroll from my talent. You sure do. That's not amazing. Okay. I'm going to have any. <laughs> hey, there. That's a pretty. Okay. That's, like a, right. that's a pretty good number. <laughs> that's a pretty good number. They, they are mildly enthused. I, uh, let's see. Something happens if I get a raise. Fuck. Uh, uh the raise Isn't is eight. It? So yeah. Um, you feel a wave of ease come over the crowd. You can you can always tell when people have a burden on their shoulders, the way they walk, the way they stand, their posture. And you can see just a little bit of that melt away. And it almost feels as if the oppressive gloom that cloaks the entirety of this town fades just a little bit at your words. I think we might make it. Uh, Stilton says from the couch and manages to get enough of his bodily momentum back that he can tip his hat to you. Yeah, that's the spirit. Listen to Stilton whenever he says positive things. You know, everybody's looking at me. I'm gonna got some stage fright. Yeehaw. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna put my hand on Stilton's room. Listen, buddy. Everyone's depending on you. You've got this. Or we're all gonna oh. die. Those are those are two very different outcomes that I'm not entirely comfortable with, yeehaw. <laughs> it's the buff people also persuasion, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it didn't go too well. No, no. it's I get a free reroll every single time. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's better. Uh, Y'all you really think I can do it? I I can do anything other than Waste my year's salary on beans? A whole year? <laughs> like an entire year? I don't get paid that much in a year, but I was told these was very particularly good beans. I'm called legume gold. Well, Sheriff, you're going to step up or you're not going to get paid ever again. Pat on the back. <laughs> Pained yeehaw, probably. <laughs> hey, yeehaw. You just uh, have a way with words. Why did I make a public speaker? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've played exclusively antisocial characters because improvising dialogue is hard, and I thought I'd play against type, and it's not working. 
Oh no, no it's, it's working great. It's, Why are you don't know what you're talking about? This is great. <laughs> Mr. Argo, you, you come back safe now, all right? I uh, wasn't planning on anything different. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> hey, Martadella, you got any other shirts? Not in your size, sweetie. No. Oh, shirts. No. All right. Then I guess we'll head back upstairs. That was really inspiring, Argo. You, you think we got a shot? Mm, no comments from the writer's room. <laughs> oh, you're keeping it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you'd be of great help. The back. Uh, the goblin quickly. is fascinated by the sausages that are hanging from the ceiling. Beck, at this point, has, like, slid a glass down the the bar, bartender style, uh, to Argo. Uh, and he just says, get drinking, we're losing time. Uh, I, I, think, I don't I drink. You drink. <laughs> Did you catch it? <laughs> just, 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 just I'm not fly. using my full. It just full flies force. past <laughs> off the counter. <laughs> <laughs> we, who framed Roger Rabbit? Like, I don't drink. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, you do. No, you don't. Like, oof. back and forth. Fuck it. Argo pretends to drink. Argo pretend. Do I have re-roll on performance also? No. <laughs> I don't think I do, do I? I have to actually spend a penny on this. Oh, and he's just... No! <laughs> I actually oh drink! <laughs> so you go to do that trick where you, like, put it to the side and it comes down out of view on the other side of you, but you fuck up a bit and you get almost all of the drink in your mouth in a way you weren't expecting where it goes straight down your throat. <laughs> 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 oh, that's the good stuff too. How does he get worse? <laughs> Beck gets up and uh, and motions to Conrad to to divvy up everything. He says, "Listen, the way the dream works, normal people aren't supposed to be here. Topsiders." They aren't meant to walk the dream, but we can. There's a space between spaces, between focuses. If you can, if you can find that place, kind of like a meditation, a trance, not quite aware, but not unaware either, you can Make find your way from place to place. Uh, Nicodemus's ears prick up when you say meditation. Um, rather than taking a drug, could I roll a uh, faith to see if Nico can meditate to walk through the dream? Yeah, give me a faith check real quick. Just for uh, know-how on how the mechanics work, that's what you'd be recalling. Yep. 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 Damn. God damn. All right, you disseminate this information you have given and you discern almost the exact method by which you can do this. You can either rely on meditation to keep your mind clear and keep it in an open state. Use transcendental meditation, essentially making a spirit roll to navigate and survive in the uh, other side. Or if you take some intoxicants, to help you along the way, you will be making a vigor roll instead. So that is essentially each individual's choice, whether they focus on something that gives them peace and it expands their mind to the possibility of universe through their own meditations, through focusing on something, or if they use some chemicals to get the job done. Gonna be the meditation. 
I'll drink. Yeah, Conrad's, <laughs> ne Conrad's never meditated a day in his life. He's gone straight for the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> I can be designated driver. Now, Beck, uh, Beck is kind of looking over everyone, and he just kind of it, he kind of lowers, like his his presence gets smaller for a moment as he says uh, in a moment of maybe self-reflection if you all think I'm scary you have not even the smallest idea of what waits out there for us I do not like this place it is a means to an end now I'm not making you walk with me. You can hide down there with the rest of them if you want, but there's only one way to undo this, and I think it rests with that Lord Barbados. Now, I can probably find our way to his domain, but it is going to be hard, and it is going to take time. And I don't think we can do it on this alone. I think we're going to need to visit a witch. He's just making this up, isn't he? <laughs> Doesn't matter. There's drugs. You oh boy. wish I was making this up, little man. Hold on, partner. You're like, what? Five foot ten? <laughs> <laughs> Five foot ten. So small. I think Give we're the same take. height. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have uh, your word we, that you're gonna not shoot us in the back? Argo's gonna do a performance check just to appear taller <laughs> with his heeled boots. Ooh. Just to appear taller than Beck. Success. That's the Beck entire check. Looks, <laughs> Beck looks at Lynn and just goes, if I wanted to shoot you, I would have shot you already. That tracks. He just kind of gives you a, a look. It's like, it's not entirely convinced. What good do I have bringing you out into the dream, letting your thoughts poison my path, then shooting you while you're turned around, drawing attention to myself out there? You think that's something I want to do? I think your path is pretty poisonous as is. Oh, you know what? That's a good question, actually. What are you What's getting it? out of us? What am I getting out of you? Bodies. Well, he's honest. Well, <laughs> <laughs> now listen, I got business with this Barbados, whoever he is. It's gonna take work to get to them. I've been to domains before. I have seen their lords. Now, this would-be lord of decay, whoever he is, this person he's subservient to, maybe he is this person. You're not going to go down easy. I'm a mean man, but even I know a fight that's hard to win. Cards on the table. I need you all as much as you need me here question is, is the fight winnable? Oh, that's a good question. Say this witch would know? Oh, she might know. Uh, the witches here, the dream witches, they're a kind of authority. Lords in their own right, but nomadic. They don't live in domains like the rest of them. They wander the sea. They have a city of their own. It's called Coltanith. It's a place where pleasure and pain are mixed, and they're the ringleaders. Now, most of them, nomad types, like to stay alone, wander the sea, do their rituals, cast a wide net and pull in fish that type now 
you best respect them. Because anything that I can do to you, they will do worse. Just nod your head, and by God, tell the truth when they ask a question. They will know when you lie. Looks at Argo. <laughs> Respect is easy. What do they trade in? Mm. Right, Toes? Man. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Rightly, I don't know. And that's the best answer I can give you. I think some of them do it out of pure curiosity. They've lived longer than death has been dying. I can't tell you any more than that. Argo's just like near silently grumbling to himself like, my lore was, my lore was way better than this. <laughs> Right. Well, Conrad, you're just about ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Is anyone else taking these? I'm in. Yes. What are these? These are psilocybin mushrooms. Uh, if you, you eat just too eat much. One. Okay. Yeah, it's a good thing I pre divvied that up to the right amount because if you ate too much, <laughs> you would have just died. So now, 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 listen. Now, listen. Slow down. I don't need oh. you off the deep end. I need you suggestible. There are differences okay. between those two things. Sure. Uh, should I roll for science to like make sure I delete them up correctly? Or? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. let's see how that turns out. <laughs> oh no, let's, let's critical fail the campaign right now. Just munching. Yeah, you did a pretty good mm -hmm. job. And l l fortunately, Lynn's a big fella, so it probably won't hit him as hard or as fast as the rest of you. Yeah, I feel like I feel mushrooms like ain't shit. <laughs> I feel like so, the, uh, Chance and I would be uh, the most messed up by this. Seconds before the drop. <laughs> so I think as as they all do this, Beck says, it's now or never if I'm going to teach you how to do this. Let's go outside. Yep, I'm going to follow him right outside. So Beck is going to walk towards that that kind of fading barrier uh that that the haze is it encroaching further on the town now strangely it looks like it's been pushed back further since the last time you looked at it like this domain this little bubble of safety has expanded a little bit but it is slowly starting to retract again mm. let's find out if argo did it any better at pretending to take mushrooms <laughs> Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Think, man, things are going to be bad for you. Things are going to be so bad for you out here. If I'm looking you don't, forward if to If you're it. not inebriated, this is going to be really hard for the party. <laughs> oh, so I'm to notice, but it will be funny. Yeah, you can give me a notice if you want. <laughs> giving Toaster the player anxiety. Uh, chance. <laughs> yeah, you notice what he did, but you also notice a weird noise. Uh, <laughs> pick. You noticed too so, good. <laughs> you noticed too good. Um, as you guys are heading out towards the edge of town, near the stables where you're likely to pick up the horses you need for the journey, Chance, your ears perk up at the sound of what almost sounds like whinnying coming from the stables, but it's strange and choppy. It's like a... <laughs> Uh, what have they uh, done to my horse? I don't like that. You get a bad feeling about what's happened to the horses. Uh, is the stable within the bubble? Um, it's right on the edge of it. Ooh. Teetering precariously, you might say. I might. You want to check it out? Oh, I gotta was, know. Was Chance the only one that heard that? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I think something strange is going on at the stables. We're going there anyway, right? We may as well. Be prepared for weird. 
All right. Do it or not, I'm getting my horse out of there. So, approaching the stables, you find what's left of the horses. Now, there weren't too many horses left in town to begin with. Mortadella made good use of the ones that ain't got owners no more. Those few that do remain have been corralled together in this communal stable. And as you gaze upon them, you realize they have become one. The touch of the other side has graced them and assembled them into (laughs) the long horse. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, shit. What breed is that? Actually, that should be bigger. Let me make that the the full. No. (laughs) (laughs) Much more to scale now. The goblin likes them. So many feet, no Why toes. Why would the goblin like him? There are no toes, toes there. And that's where we're going to take our break. Oh, uh, don't ask questions. <laughs> You're telling All me right. this isn't the forward dimension? 